People struggle to be happy because you can't be happy. You can only be exactly where you're at. And when you're willing to fully be only where you're at, happiness is a luxurious consequence of surrender. The first bold step of how to let sadness transform you in the very beginning will sound like the most hopeless step that your ego is afraid to admit. But if you give yourself a few moments, just one minute, 60 seconds to sit with, if I was meant to be any other way, I would be. We are all co-creators of our reality. And there is an assumption that if I'm the co-creator of my reality, I should be able to control my reality. When we are not just playing our role of steering the ship, but trying to control the direction of the vessel and control the fate of the voyage, we are in an adversarial relationship with life. We are trying to be controllers of our destiny instead of co-creators of our reality. And when we are disappointed, disappointment is interpreted on an egoic level as rejection. We feel like we're not good enough, we didn't earn enough, we didn't do good enough. We feel like the universe may not be supporting us to our highest level. And so disappointment often feels like a failure. It feels like a rejection, but a rejection on an egoic level is actually just a redirection on the soul's journey. That really disappointment is how life redirects us in the direction of what is our most infinite joy and highest happiness. The precursor to meeting sadness as a potent transformer is the willingness to be vulnerable. The part of us that doesn't know how to be vulnerable or refuses to be vulnerable is anger. And in anger, we hide behind righteousness and helplessness and victimhood and neediness. And we are actually fighting not against the things that we think we're angry about, but we're fighting against meeting the sadness that will transform us. And there's a possibility I could be hurt more, but isn't that a risk I have to be willing to take just to meet the potency and the transformational value of sadness that is guaranteeing it will take me on an adventure. It will guide me through a jungle and there may be threats that can take me out of the journey. But if I let sadness guide me through the wild terrain of my inner jungle, it will guide me decisively to the paradise of my own true happiness. So disappointment, as unpopular as it is and as painful as it can feel, is actually how life prepares you to be happier than you've ever imagined. And there is no more of a potent healer that clears out every barrier we have against happiness than a healer known as sadness.